Well, hi everyone. Welcome to our second presentation today, and it's by the very inspiring Sylvia Guinan. So she's going to say hi to you. Hello, everybody. So uh, my name is Sylvia Guinan, broadcasting from Greece. I live on the Greek island, and this is how I got here today to be with Shelley uh, through working online from my remote little place. And I've got her book with me today, and I'm going to talk about my work, my experiences, and how Shelley's work and her book were with me along the way, helping me to share and inspire with you. Well, thank you. That's so meaningful. And that, oh my gosh, when you posted a picture of that, I remember on Facebook, it was really incredible. And um, I have to say, I'm going to tell you about. A, uh, Sylvia professionally, but I also want to say that she is just one of those teachers and educators that, and connected educators that really is very supportive and has such a big heart. And I really appreciated your participation in the 30 Goals. It's been truly amazing. So while she gets her presentation up and going, uh, let me tell you a little about her professionally. Sylvia Guinan is an online English teacher, a teacher trainer, an educational technology facilitator, and a blogger, and an incredible one at that. She uses brain-friendly techniques to help students and teachers around the world. She designs educational materials and develops courses, as well as organizing and moderating professional development initiatives online. I've been with her on a few MOOCs, so um, she's definitely very, very, very busy. Um, She's also an online English teacher, and she specializes in exam preparation in business English. She does this through a focus, creative, multimedia approach. You can find her on Twitter at ESL Brain, and um, she also has an online blog, um, and it's Sylvia's English Online. Um, Sylvia, I don't see your screen share yet. Oh, okay, sorry, let me see. Try again. And sometimes that's the thing about technology. We just keep trying and trying. <laughs> but she's going to share with you some uh, really great, really great information about ed tech. Every time that I see her ed tech in her ed tech presentations, I'm very inspired. Can you see it now? Yes, it looks beautiful. Oh, great. Okay, thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Shelley. Um, yeah, I've always been inspired with any uh, collaborations and work we've done together. Um, I first met Shelley uh, in 2013 um, during her Evo storytelling um, course with Marisa Constantinidis. And since then, we've worked together on massive open online courses and more of Shelley's. Um, projects like her, her e-book initiative, helping teachers all over the world to publish e-books. And actually, there's so much that we've done, it's hard to mention everything, but one that stands out to uh, my mind is when we did a webinar together about um, the hero's journey. And I'm going to mention that today because uh, this webinar is an overview of uh, what it's like to teach and engage people online through social learning and through community using educational technology and how that helps you to grow as a person and as an educator and as a professional and how there is so much meaning behind it and so much more we can do than we realize. So uh, if everything is still clear and you can see my screen um, I've entitled this EdTech Stream and Flow, Give and Grow, and that's because uh, my experience uh, working online feels like a stream of influence where I create, I share, I get feedback, and people learn from me and I learn from them, okay? Uh, it's, it's a metaphor and it's also very, very real uh, in the technological sense. Um, also, I know that from all of my experience, every time I give something, publish something, or share something, uh, I grow as a person, either 
uh, through appreciation from other people or through what I've learned in the process and through uh, new insights and new ambitions that come every time you reach a milestone and you want to try something new. So because it's, a, a, okay, what I've done um, in the last six or seven years is a lot of work and because Shelley has managed to, uh, to condense a whole new world of teaching uh, through goals, through inspiration and through technology into an amazing book. Um, I, I've decided to condense my little talk into five uh, concepts that will include her goals. So these are five things to take away today. I'm going to talk about talents, giving, community, being proactive and lastly the 80-20 principle. It's also called Pareto's principle and this is what saves us when we have too much to do and too little time. Okay, so I'm moving on to the next slide. Uh, I hope everything is still clear. So I'm talking about talent first of all. So in my experience as teachers when we become creative and when we share um, we become more talented individuals. So I realized that myself because when I decided to teach online, uh, my first realization was that I would have to create all of my own materials because I couldn't, uh, I couldn't just use uh, hard copy books or even scan them because of copyright issues. And once I started uh, creating my own materials, then I learned to love multimedia and then I had new desires to challenge myself further and further and further and the next step after that was sharing what I had created so I started going on to Facebook and other social networks and then I discovered that sharing also expands um, our abilities um, how we communicate with people increases our empathy and our connectivity so that's you social intelligence and emotional intelligence are new talents that you develop as you create, as you share, and as you connect with people and teachers all over the world. So uh, the point is, instead of asking yourself, do you have a talent or do you not have a talent, um, if you allow yourself to play around with multimedia and social networks and the World Wide Web, who you are as a person uh, just comes out on the screen and comes out in your work. It's kind of like a ghost writing scenario where you're not forcing yourself to do anything, it emerges. It's emerging creativity and all of us do this in different ways. And from all of my colleagues I can see that, for example, I've always focused more on blogging and uh, multimedia, but I still share that, you know, in webinars and on the internet, but other people focus more on videos or being more in front of the camera. So who we are, we all have our talents and they just emerge, okay? Now, speaking of the edge of goals, other ways to find or uh, develop or discover new talents as we create uh, are in Shelley's book where she goes into very great detail about uh, goal 1, envision your greatness. Goal 2, create your teaching manifesto. Goal 27, shake things up. Manifest an idea. I've circled integrate technology because um, my experience is from uh, the technology and online teaching perspective. But these were goals that I chose to go under the concept of talent. Somebody else might read Shelley's book and find other things that would inspire from different goals for this, okay? But um, it, I think it's very important to understand talent. I think it's important to understand our own strengths and where they come from and to allow them to flow when we create and not to be afraid to create and not to be afraid to share. Okay, now, so for me and in my experience, uh, doing experiments, just going out there, sharing, communicating, as well as reading and uh, researching and testing things. Um, I came to the conclusion that technology weaves new worlds of talent, basically because it's, as I said, uh, it's something we work out as we go along and we get inspired by little successes and new things emerge. I also came to the conclusion that uh, we should not be afraid of technology 
and we've got to uh, embrace this new way of living as our students have and it's just a continuum. That's why I created this image. Uh, this is an image I created for a presentation in Dublin and that presentation was called Harnessing Educational Technology to Boost Confidence, Creativity and Social Intelligence and I've got a link there for you to check. So later you can find this on SlideShare with all of my other presentations. So we're, it's a creative continuum, okay, and we've, you know, we've got to play around, explore and discover and turn into people we may envision um, through Shelley's goals but also beyond what we envision because every time we succeed something else happens, new opportunities come that we would never have expected. But um, I'm not just going to talk about technology or freedom today, I'm going to talk about what we do with technology because uh, I experience technology as something with soul because we the teachers create, we the teachers uh, share and we want our students to become better people in a humanistic way. So with creation comes the responsibility of staying true to one's values and instilling values in others. Uh, Shelley's Edgegold book is full of values either explicitly or implicitly in every chapter and every page. So um, I hope my presentation can be true to the values in her book because it's worth its way just from values uh, beyond her experiences or all the extra things that you learn. Um, I also have a little ebook I made called Timeless Teaching Techniques for the Digital Age and that's a link down there because it's, uh, there's a lot of work behind all of this. Now, so because uh, I really want to talk about the humanistic side of teaching and how technology enhances the humanistic side of teaching, um, I'll share this quickly. It's better to give than receive, better to create than consume. And by sharing and creating our own stories, we are creating our own learning cultures and myths. So we've got a lot of power. Um, power to improve ourselves, power to live more meaningful lives, power to inspire others and most importantly influence our students. Okay, so that's why giving is one of the concepts I'm going to focus on. Now, uh, so this is a photo of me uh, in a coffee shop on my little island, Sassos, uh, having a frappe, iced coffee, drink, uh, reading Shelley's book. Okay, and I've put my favourite quote above that I think about when I need inspiration and energy. So here's the quote, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it because what the world needs is people who have come alive. So what I feel here is that instead of following the rules and doing what we should do, what we're supposed to do, which can kill your spirit at times. Um, in the wrong moments. Uh, we've got to keep that little part of ourselves alive that wants to create. Okay, even if, I, I personally speaking, um, I've been extremely busy uh, for the last 10 years with babies and four children and work and lots of other things, but uh, okay, coming to work online made me more creative automatically, but uh, with my time management, I always knew if I could keep one little part of my time for myself to create then everything will work out. So that started off with 20% of my time when my children were asleep at night and then what I did was so effective it turned into my whole teaching job, okay? Um, I'm going to talk about that later. If you follow one little inspiration it will expand because when you feel alive you are more inspired and when you're more inspired other people are inspired and then you get noticed and uh, you surpass milestone after milestone. Okay, so when I asked myself what makes me come alive in my work, uh, I came up with multimedia and stories because this is how I think, feel and communicate or how I feel life as such. So I suppose, uh, and whatever talent I had coming out was from reading, I read a lot, but the reading helped me to write well and uh, my visual artistic side just allows me to have a lot of fun with multimedia and it doesn't even feel like work. But I was thinking of who else is going to look at this slide today or what other people are going to think when they read the book or if they look at this quote of mine. And I asked a question on Facebook and got some very inspiring responses. 
So I can, if you can all see the next slide here, um, I created a whole new slide inspired by uh, a response I got from a colleague called Joel Josephson who uh, works uh, with uh, videos, multimedia and um, lots of European projects all over the world. And his response was open mind, retain the child, endless compassion, passion, passion, passion. And I thought that was lovely and very poetic. Um, and also I found the beautiful image to go with that. So I think this is very inspiring. Uh, another colleague came up with a more psychological and deeper response. Um, and he focused on what it means to come alive. Right? So as teachers, the more we come alive, the more our work comes alive, the more our students come alive, and the more our influence and the wider world comes alive. Okay? And this is what my colleague Stephen said. Coming alive is for me not the recognition of self, but the gift of empathy. To be enabled to know and understand how others may feel, rather than being totally occupied by oneself and the acknowledgement of the true added value of understanding and acceptance of difference in our diverse world. Um, it's, it's, yeah, there are a lot of very deep thoughts here and very important for us as educators who influence children and networks and communities all over the world, uh, empathy and diversity and how important that is. And compassion, living, truly living compassionate lives rather than always pursuing our own personal needs and agendas. So on one hand, we're talking about the edge of goals, and we're talking about uh, planning our teaching lives, being successful. But the interesting thing is that if you only plan for yourself, and if you are ambitious in an empty sense, then nothing will ever happen. It only happens when you're compassionate and you feel connected to other people. So really, uh, this webinar could be about technology, or it could be about a book, it could be about setting goals, but it's more about the spirit of uh, humanism and compassion. And we, that's the responsibility I feel that we have to use technology to influence the way we want to, and not, not like we've been told in the past with, through establishments and uh, governments and whatever, you know, they, they may force us to do things in certain ways. Uh, Shelley's book also uh, mentions in the technology chapter how we can always experiment and create regardless of constraints, and I've written a lot of articles on that too. So, um, and Rosemary, Rosemary Ribeira said, go beyond the books or your students go beyond the grades. And I had an image exactly to match uh, Rosemary's comment also from my Dublin conference, so I've added that here. You can see a book opening up into interactivity because once you go online uh, with your links, we've got blogging, posters, videos, comics, and so on, that frees us as teachers and free students to uh, interact with language uh, with multimedia. Now, the second concept was about giving, okay? Um, now, I, I would not know Shelley Turrell today or anyone else who knows me and came to see me here. Um, I wouldn't have a personal learning network and I wouldn't have any presence beyond my island if I did not give away my work and share a lot of what I do, okay? So, uh, it, it's, giving for me is uh, so important on, on so many levels. Now I'm just talking about the social level and the level of influence. Um, I found quite a few goals uh, in Shelley's book that reflect giving for me. So, goal seven reflects through a blog. This is basically uh, what I do most of the time. I share my ideas uh, on my blogs. And I've had three major sources of feedback from that. First of all, I get a lot of messages from teachers who are inspired by something that I write. It could be just an idea or it could be something they've learned about technology. But I get this feedback a lot. And um, to be appreciated for your work um, makes you more appreciative of your wider community and keeps you going, keeps you energized to share even more. So, um, planting seed of belief, I think I, I've done that myself through my blogs. We know that Shelley has done that uh, through her work and through her book and all of her absolutely amazing 
conferences and initiatives. Okay, um, all your goals are invite them in, send them on learning missions to do them more student centered. Uh, daring, plain. So, when we have open spirits, free spirits, give of ourselves, our students give back more to us. Um, this happens at classroom level and social levels and uh, life itself. It's so important. Okay, now, so here's a quote about blogging Creativity, like love itself, is a gift that simply by its expression benefits those who express it and those who receive it. So I feel like that when I create things, um, whether it's a presentation like this one or uh, uh, just an, an article, a paragraph, a word, a conversation on Facebook, uh, an expression of myself or listening to someone else, empathizing with somebody else. And if we can have creativity and love our creativity and express love through our creativity, uh, we'll never burn out and we'll, we'll never question what we're doing. So you can ask, is your work shaped by love? Um, for me, this is why we give to grow and this is why giving is important. Um, uh, these images here, were cre I created these a couple of years ago when we are, I, are, uh, I worked on the Spring Blog Festival with Shelley and Nelly Deutsch and the three of us um, organized a conference for bloggers all over the world and these images were part of my presentation so you can see i've done um i've put up some words here about the edge of goals and about communities and keywords inspire build leadership and share okay love and grow now uh i have written a lot of articles about blogs and blogging uh so i've got a link here that you can access from SlideShare. There's, I think there's about 18 uh, blogs and presentations on that, just about blogging. Now, uh, so how do we give, how do we share and express this love for life and learning? Um, we go... Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if um, as I think Sylvia might have um, accidentally um, gotten off. So we're going to come back to her in a bit and we're going to make sure that she comes back and she finishes this. In the meantime, um, we do want you to know that every time that you're here, um, for every single presentation, make sure to sign the attendance form because you can win um, lots of prizes. We have tons of prizes and every attendee actually will get something. So um, just letting you know that. Okay, so I see in the chat that yes, in fact, we have lost Sylvia, but that's okay because she was inspiring us with the little bit that she did do. 
And what we can do is we can already get her um, to come back and then she can finish up if we don't um, get to have her now. But um, for every single one of these presentations, um, we also have collaborative Google Docs. And if you could fill those out with any notes or any um, uh, questions or comments, that way the presenters can see them afterwards. And it's always nice because with this platform, they don't get to see you right away. Um, they don't get to they don't get to see you. Um, and interact with you like they necessarily would. Well, there's so many. Yeah, she's back. <laughs> uh, Shirley, do you want Shirley, to? Shirley, did you lose me? I think uh, we lost you. Let's see. It was. I was I was tweeting the slide give, but I know it was after that. So. <laughs> so I mean, how many minutes? Because I had a little power cut. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm thinking, um, let's see if somebody in the chat box can tell us. Well, I think it was about two or three minutes ago, and I didn't know where to go forward with the slides. I was three slides. I was on this slide, I think. Well, share the slide, and then I can tell you from there. Yeah. Can you see it? No, it's not screen sharing. It's still okay. you on video. I'll try again. Um, it's okay. We can always edit the video, so don't worry about that. Okay. I'm trying again to screen share. Here we go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is where I was when I got the power cut. Okay. Can you, can you, did anyone in the chat box um, comment on that? No, they were still talking about when you were talking about passion and oh. and how you can keep learning and things like that. Okay. So we'll let you continue from here. Yes. Anyway, yeah, I talked about the blogging and um, I shared. I've got a link here sharing. Uh, 12 or 18 um, different articles about blogs and presentations for people who want to learn more about blogging. Um, now I'm just showing something very quick about multimedia. Um, so how can we give more, express more and inspire our students more? We can just start experimenting uh, with video animation, comics and so on. And by doing that we develop visual literacy and visual literacy in our students. Uh, and that changes their brains and it changes the way they feel and experience the world. And I think that when we are able to respond to something visually and create it visually and take meaning from a word and visualize that whole thing, we are already more connected with our worlds and um, what we see, what we feel. Uh, we're more connected with the world on different levels. So it's extremely important uh, intellectually and, and socially and, and as human beings for all of us and for our students. Okay, and this is my little book about technology. You can click on that link later. Okay, so now this is a mind map of a digital classroom. I made this a couple of years ago also when I was uh, exploring uh, Nick Peachy's book about digital classrooms, which he's going to publish soon. Anyway, um, it, it looks like a very big thing for people who are, have not tried uh, using technology in the classroom, but uh, we do things in little stages, so probably for most people the first stage is the textbook, um, how they can keep using the course book because they have to use it, but that they can go beyond the course book using um, lit very easy user friendly tools, okay? Um, and later you learn to fix up your environment and other things. Now, the, the set, this concept here is all about community. For me, uh, working online, teaching online, uh, and creating multimedia could never happen without community. Um, so I'm here today because of community. This is a business where people connect with people. And business is the wrong word, but it, whatever it is, uh, sharing, teaching, it's all about people. So uh, I found all of these goals uh, that are connected with community from Shelley's book. So 
you, I started establishing a web presence simply by going on to Facebook and commenting. And in English groups, and the response I got was absolutely amazing. And the first thing I did was set up a Facebook group, and things, um, you know, went on from there. Um, I also joined communities, like on WizIQ, we had our EduPunk community for uh, experimenting with creativity. Later on, I met Shelley and joined lots of her initiatives and communities. And Jason and I built up Jason R. Levine, who is. Um, uh, an educator who teaches through rap music and stuff. We did lots of stuff together. Uh, communities blend in together. When we find like-minded people, we keep uh, creating new projects together. It's very inspiring. So that's all what we've been doing, spreading messages, making global connections. These are all in great detail in Shelley's book, full of stories. So um, I go on from there. Now, this is uh, my ripple effect image. Um, I just had this idea to depict the goals um, as little pebbles in the pond. Um, when we think about one stone being thrown in the pond and um, we see the ripples uh, reaching out, we realize that one small act can have a great influence. So I was thinking about all of these little pebbles that represent each goal. Um, so many educators throw in their own little pebbles in their own little ponds and how many ripple effects can emerge and how they can all merge together. So sometimes we can do much more than we think we can do because we're always beset by challenges um, and difficulties in our lives. And something like this helps us to remember the bigger picture. And now here's a quote: "There is no such thing as a small act of kindness. Every act creates a ripple with no logical end." And I shared this picture on Facebook. I do that sometimes when I'm uh, creating my PowerPoints just to get some interaction going. And uh, Jason Orlevine gave us this beautiful description. What, my question on Facebook is, what is this? And he said, it's a 30 goals tie-dye roulette wheel maple syrup ripple experience. So that's what I love about social networks. Uh, his response was an example of uh, connectivity and kindness and how we influence each other. Sometimes being funny is the best way to be kind. When we uh, look at what people are doing and we make a comment or we validate what people do, um, this type of simple interaction, this is what makes everything so exciting. Okay? And when you try and social networks just by sharing some little things, you're going to feel uh, so much more connected also. Now, so windows of opportunity. Uh, I tried to depict here what actually progressed uh, in my last few years online. Um, so I started off experimenting, and this leads to uh, your talents manifesting because I started writing when I, I hadn't written before, and then playing with multimedia and visual literacy. And then who you are emerges because when I write something or create something, what I believe in comes out. For example, in this presentation, I believe in the power of giving and community, and this just comes out when I do it. It's no big, uh, it's not a strategy, it's myself, okay? So your teaching values emerge, and then they merge with wider communities. An example of what's happening here today. So to do this, you give of your heart, your mind, your time, and your ideas. Now, some of the harder parts are sharing time and ideas. Um, Okay, time is something I'll speak about at the end. Ideas, people fear that if they give away ideas, they will run out of ideas. But the opposite is true. The more you give away ideas, the more ideas you get. So my ideas are a flow, uh, which is why I named this webinar the EdTech Stream. Okay, it's like a stream. You give, give, and more comes. Okay, and uh, your mind, okay, we need to... That, I think that's natural. If we don't connect our minds with people, um, we become lonely. So, and heart as well, heart and mind. So, giving is essential for us as human beings. Okay, um, community. So, when you do all of this, the community resonates, they respond, and then they create, they share, and they inspire. So, it's never ending. Okay. Um, and, but what do you share and what do you do is often the question. So you learn about focus. So what you love to do will grow with you and define your teaching self the way you want to be defined and attract more opportunities. So uh, I've always had a problem with time and sometimes I'd have different responsibilities or opportunities coming at the same time. Like 
maybe I have to teach so many hours just to earn an income. But I also want to be part of a big conference. Um, and I've been juggling for quite a few years, but the only thing I refused to give up was blogging and multimedia. And that's because it was my focus. I really wanted to do it. And that 20% turned into 80% of my work. Okay. And, uh, okay, we all have difficulties in our lives. So the other thing is about being proactive. Uh, in the nature of my work, I have to be proactive or nothing would ever happen. Okay, and we quickly learn the things we can control and the things we can't. And we have some great experiences and we have some terrible experiences. Okay, and that's true for all of us. But by being proactive and true to ourselves and giving and being connected, we overcome anything. And actually, in my working life, uh, being connected to communities have helped me out of darker things in general. So I, I can't emphasize enough how important these concepts are to me. And I know many people here share these concepts and that's why we are th this community resonating and sharing together. Um, now, so, okay, that's, that was basically my journey, educational technology and the World Wide Web. So it gives us the power to forge our own paths in work and life. And then we can always take on new directions. So I'm going to just do more design because I love that. Um, more design and more multimedia um, and more community work um, as well. So now this is just a picture of what happened with my work because I started off with um, a very old desktop computer, just me, myself in my room, okay? Um, there's a picture here of a webinar, one of these webinars. Um, Jason is in this picture. It's hard to remember which one it is. I think Chuck Sandy is here. It was one of our very big uh, massive open online courses. But my work um, started there. Then with the community, I got invitations to travel to Dublin and Athens where I could present on the ground. And this only happened recently because I couldn't travel with my children who were too young. Um, so my experience is going from virtual teaching and influences actually to actually being in the same room as people. So it's kind of backwards. Most people do it the other way around. Uh, th this, these pictures in this collage um, inspire me um, if I don't remember where I came from or what I'm doing. So, and actually, uh, Shelley has a chapter in the book called, a Pre uh, what was it, Celebrate Your Achievements. Um, I think that we should visualize our achievements and, and celebrate them and share them. And often we, we feel too modest or too shy or too embarrassed to share any achievements we have. But um, if we are a community and we appreciate each other, then we are beyond uh, that little ego thing. And we should be happy to share little successes. So other people... So other people can do the same. And someone told me recently that she likes the way I leave little breadcrumbs of advice through my blogs. And sometimes a picture is a breadcrumb, a video or a little achievement. Okay, and I think all of us should do that. Um, now, this is the, this slide is more about the darker side and I'm almost finished. Um, hard things happen to us and we get stuck in life. And a lot of, uh, some of the greatest educational leaders um, have had to go through this and I presented on this with Shelley last year about the hero's journey. The hero's journey was her idea and it came to me when I really needed it because I was going through um, part the hard part of my hero's journey. Now if you've never heard of that I have links to it but the point is we all have difficult stages in our lives and we need to stay inspired and energized. So look at all of these goals here I found in Shelley's book to help you through dark times, build a teacher survival kit, avoid burnout, send a future message to yourself. You can have students do all of these things as well, of course. Reevaluate value. We, we, we always need to go back to the core of ourselves, who we are and our own uh, core messages to the world because things change and we change and we can lose sight of that. Um, so rethink behavior, shake things up and change your environment, all of these, are so so important okay and 
I'm, I'm finishing with the 80-20 principle because I know that most people have a uh, very difficult teaching lives. They work many hours, they're not paid enough, they may not have access to technology and they may have personal problems above and beyond all of that. So it looks like a very bleak picture, yet here we are in these webinars uh, telling you that everything is rose-coloured and happy. But it depends on how you see things and how you organise your time. So for every person out there who's too busy and too tired, uh, we all deserve um, some time for ourselves as a hobby. When my children were babies, uh, my learning on the internet, reading blogs and learning about web tools was my hobby. I said to myself, if, I, if you don't turn your work into your hobby, you're never going to work or have a hobby. So my work is my hobby. Uh, so for other people in very difficult situations, I think you can use technology to find one little thing that you love to do and then do it and say it's your hobby and it's your free time and enjoy it and then this will expand into your uh, wider teaching life. That's the way I did it. Um, I think that I manage my life with this principle by focusing on what's important and seeing the results and going with the results. Because then you'll understand what's important and what's not important. Okay, um, so I hope that some of you are ready to make a splash. Okay, so we have one picture of diving in, ready to take on the world. And we have another of Mr. Bean, who's afraid to dive into the swimming pool. And Mr. Bean needs the Edge of Gold book, of course. And he's asking Teddy where it is. So I hope you all know that who Teddy is, Mr. Bean's little soft toy. Okay, so um, that's, I'm finished with that. I'm sorry if it was too long and sorry about the power cut. Okay, and I've stopped screen sharing. Okay, Shelley. Well, thank you so much, Sylvia. And yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll try to edit the video and stuff so that way it's all together and stuff. Um, we can, I can read you some of the comments that um, people made. And then we're probably going to have to go right after that, uh, unfortunately, okay. for the next one. Um, yeah. But uh, Peggy and a lot of people were saying how beautiful and inspiring your slides were. So many of the people um, were talking about that as well. Um, they were also quoting you on the on the passion. And um, a pe one comment Peggy said, uh, well, she actually made uh, two that I thought were really great. She said, love the thought about better to create than consume. But of course, there's a place for consuming when we blog and tweet and interact with others. Yes. Yes, yes, that's true. If we all create and no one reads anything that anyone else writes or creates, then we'll all be separate and we won't be connected and we won't be influenced. Yeah, so yeah, that's an excellent point. I, I often see these things as a feedback loop that they work together. Thank you for the lovely comments. And with that, we'll go ahead and head off to the next session. But thank you so much. It was really inspiring. And I think if you go back to the chat wing and the Twitter stream, you're going to see um, how much you inspired a lot of people about being passionate about learning and what they love. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope everybody tries to continue doing what they love and sharing with all of us. So thank you so much, uh, Shelley, and everybody.